name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Almighty God, thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in thee. Pour thy love into our hearts and draw us to thyself, and so bring us at the last to thy heavenly city, where we shall see thee face to face. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Lord be with you. And, and with thy spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and praise God, except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 
When you were a child, did one of your parents or your carer remind you always to say please and thank you? I know my mum uh, always did, particularly if I was going to visit one of my friend's houses uh, and spend time with their families. Or did you dread writing all those thank you notes after your birthday or after Christmas? My mum convinced me to do that too. I may have told you before about that man who received what he thought was a, a boring gift from his aunt, a box of handkerchiefs. And he was so disappointed that he decided he was going to give this gift away to one of his friends for their birthday. And the man then, a week later, received a thank you card from that friend, expressing thanks for the handkerchiefs and the 20 pound note that was inside the box. Saying thank you is an important and sometimes a hard thing to learn. But then as a child, I found out that adults don't always say thank you. When I was in the Cub Scouts, I went bobber jobbing. It's a very outdated practice. I wouldn't like to think of the risk assessment for something like that these days. But basically, you got uh, a bob for a job. So it was about 5p originally, but then it sort of developed to a small amount of money for a, for a little bit of work that you did. And one day, my cub friends and I cleared the backyard of the local pharmacy. And we cleared it of cardboard boxes. And as we were clearing these boxes, in one of them, I found a 20 pound note. And we decided to hand this money back into the owner of the shop. And I took it to him, and he didn't even say thank you. He just said, oh, that's where that money got to. And then he gave the five of us 50 pence to share. 50 measly pence. I'm not bitter. I hope you can tell. <laughs> Saying thank you is an important and sometimes hard thing to do, whether you're young or old. I know some of the reasons that have got in the way of me saying thank you over the years. I've forgotten. I haven't felt like it. I didn't like the person, or I was angry with the person, or sometimes because I've been so caught up in my own stuff, what's going on for me at the time. But it's also true to say that sometimes we get so absorbed by the gift that we forget or neglect the giver of the gift. One of the lines in uh, one of my favorite hymns says this, we seek the giver not the gift. And that's certainly the stark warning of today's scripture readings. In the book of Deuteronomy, you shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land he's given you. And then after that comes this warning, take care that you do not forget the Lord your God. And in Luke's version of the gospel, there's the account of the ten who receive much and yet only one who remembers to thank the giver of the gift. Here we have a picture of God's generosity in the gift of healing and wholeness bestowed on the ten with leprosy and in the description of the good land with flowing streams, vines and fig trees, olive trees and honey in that reading from Deuteronomy. And notice that God sees our need and willingly gives to us. He knows that it's not right for his people to wander aimlessly without a home and promises the gift of a land of abundance. And Christ comes to the place where the lepers can be found, the edge or the entrance to the village. He sees our need. He spots the opportunity to provide. He loves to give generously to us. And he does so by coming to us where we are. Be encouraged. Christ comes to us in our place of need, in generosity and love. And let's remember too that he's already with us in the good things that we have. God's hallmark of generosity is on the love we receive, the food we enjoy, the support of our friends and the clothes we wear. And perhaps at times like this, we have to look more closely or be more determined to look for God's goodness. 
in a year like 2020, maybe it's true a little bit more, or a lot more even, than usual. In all the challenges and the stresses and the strains of such a demand, demanding time, God's goodness, it might not be so immediately apparent, like that £20 note hidden in those handkerchiefs. Nevertheless, God's goodness is there. And at times like this, we can persevere. We look more closely to look beyond the immediate. And when we look, the generosity of the giver can be seen in the goodness of the gift. But not everyone has the eyes for it. And if we do, we might not have the heart for it. Take the nine people with leprosy who gladly took the gift of healing from Christ. They could clearly see who it was who instigated their healing. After all, they were calling for him. Master, have pity on us. And yet, it's only one of them who returns to Jesus, who has the humility to bow at his feet to thank him. Sometimes, even those who see themselves as God's people, his church, Christians, gladly receive the gift and yet neglect to return to him and in humility to thank him. Luke tells us that it was a foreigner who turned back, praising God with a loud voice. Even those who see themselves as being close to God can be blind to his goodness, take his gifts for granted and fail to thank him. At this time of year, we celebrate, of course, the harvest. So be encouraged to bless the Lord, your God, for the good land that he's given us. And like the thankful man who has been healed in that reading from Luke's Gospel, to praise God for his goodness. Because there is power in praise. The man having thanked Christ while lying prostrate before him is told by Christ, get up, go on your way, your faith has made you well. The man receives healing of his body and soul. Not only can he go on his way knowing that his body is healed, but he can go on his way knowing that all is well with his soul. This is the product of praise. So look again for the giver, not just the gift. Notice the goodness of God, even if it takes effort and time and perseverance and lift your voice to join the eternal song of heaven. I'm going to finish with a poem I absolutely love called Everyone Sang by Siegfried Sassoon. Everyone suddenly burst out singing and I was filled with such delight as prisoned birds must find in freedom winging wildly across the white orchards and dark green fields on, on and out of sight. Everyone's voice was suddenly lifted and beauty came like the setting sun. My heart was shaken with tears and horror drifted away. Oh, but everyone was a bird and the song was wordless. The singing will never be done. Amen. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In our time of intercession, we particularly pray today with thanksgiving for the good gifts that God gives us. We continue to pray for all who suffer with the coronavirus and with those who work to find a vaccine. God may prosper their handiwork. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and that all who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear us. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant Alan, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that they may serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear us. We beseech thee, O Lord, to direct with thy heavenly wisdom all those who rule over the nations of the world. Bless thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her, that thy people may be faithfully and justly governed. Lord, hear us. Of thy goodness, O Lord, help and comfort all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, particularly those on our hearts whom we lift before you now. granting them a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, hear us. We commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. We pray for the recently departed, for any who have died in this past night, especially those with no one to pray for them, and for any whose year mind falls at this time beseeching thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. Lord, hear us. We bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in the blessed Virgin Mary, Alban, and in all thy saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Endeavour to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
the Lord be with you. up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. For he is the great high priest who has loosed us from our sins, and has made us to be a royal priesthood unto thee, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we, Lord, and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and singing.
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. The body of Christ.
let us pray. Lord, we pray thee that thy, may, thy grace may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks Thank be you, God. God.